Bernadette Jones is a freelance HR consultant. She is certified as a senior professional in human resources, one of only 4,300 SPHRs in California. So one of the things I really want to do with this program is to put some of the tools and best practices that have been researched and paid for by big business and bring those to the small business person who may not be aware of them. So what are some of the things that are going on with HR in, in big business that can be adapted to the small, for the small business owner? Uh, well, I think uh, one of the big things with HR is that bigger businesses are really starting to look at HR as a business partner. And you'll see advertisements for HR business partners, strategic HR managers. So they're really beginning to see how important it is to have your employees engaged and um, in focus with the company culture. And so when you think about it, uh, and they've already realized this, that your largest expense is going to be your people. That is your greatest expense. And, but many times in the past, you know, that was kind of left to the side. Oh, you have the HR people, they fill out the paperwork, and, you know, that was basically it. But they, they always just say, oh, our people are our most important thing, and that's about as far as it went. That's as far as it went. But now people are really beginning to appreciate how important it is for you to have your employees engaged in the company and really working to support the company. And so because of that, um, uh, larger businesses have really seen the need to partner with HR and to make sure that they're in at the beginning stages of whatever strategic plan, uh, whatever growth plan that they have in place is to make sure that um, HR is there at the beginning and you're, they're the uh, liaison and they are the spokesperson for the employees um, and the company to make sure everything flows properly because if your employees are not happy, you, you're going to have issues with your business. Mm -hmm. Your customers aren't going to be happy. And so you want to make sure that they're engaged. Um, and because it's such a huge expense, you know, it's better to take advantage of it the best way you can than to, you know, have employees who are just there doing a job, collecting a paycheck, and they're, they've left and they could care less whether or not the company right. is profitable. Right. Talk about what are some of the ways that you can get folks, you were talking about getting people on board, but to get them to really be proactive and to think of solutions mm -hmm. and, and that kind of thing. Yes. Well, I think um, the way to get people on board, I believe in the three R's of um, talent acquisition and management. And the first thing is recruiting. So you recruit exceptional people. You're looking for people that other companies may not realize that they're an exceptional talent. So you're looking for those different kinds of people, not just skill-wise, but great fit. So that's going to be an excellent employee or an exceptional employee for your business, but maybe not for another business because they fit your culture. So you start off there. After you get these exceptional people, then you want to recognize their talents. So on a daily basis, you recognize your employees in large and small ways. So, and that, but you recognize them and give them recognition based on things that they value, not what you value. Okay. So for instance, um, I had an assistant, and she was an excellent assistant, but she loved to go to the movies, but she did not want to pay full price to go to the movies. So I would often get her movie tickets for she and her husband. I'd get her two movie tickets, and that meant so much to her because she wanted to go see the movie, but she wasn't going to pay for it. So I recognized her for great things she did, and it, all it took was a couple movie tickets, and she was thrilled with that. Um, so it's not always large monetary rewards, uh, a simple handwritten thank you note. Um, can you imagine you come in and you've got a handwritten thank you note from your boss? Wow. How many people do that? Yeah. So when your employees realize that you are concerned about them as an individual, mm -hmm. um, then you get buy-in. And then also that buy-in occurs when you allow them to have a stake in the company. When they say, you say stakeholders, they should really be stakeholders. They should really have a stake in the company. So that means that you're, you're concerned about what it is that they feel is important, uh, an important direction for the business to, to go. You're soliciting suggestions. So you're uh, not talking about financial stake necessarily? No. No, just a stake as in you have a stake as to whether this business is successful or not. And it's going to impact you. Not just keeping your job, right. but the idea that um, I'm fulfilled by coming to work. So if you spend eight to 10 hours a day working and getting to work and you're not fulfilled in that job or you don't feel engaged, then basically you're just coming to collect a paycheck. And if somebody offers you a bigger check, then you're gone. Right. 
So if the comp if the employee is engaged and they feel they have a stake, I have um, I can I can give a suggestion. It's it's acted upon. That People their look ideas at matter. it. Their ideas matter. All those kinds of things are going to keep the employee engaged. So when they give a suggestion, if it's a good suggestion, suggestion, act on it. Don't just take suggestions and ignore them, right. or acknowledge that you know the suggestion was given. Not just for suggestions that save money, and they you know because and that's great. If they save money, they get a portion of what they saved. Some companies do that. That's great. Um, but really, get those suggestions coming. You've got all those brains, and so you want to to tap in to all that knowledge that you have on your staff. And so recognizing that is gonna encourage them. And once you do that, then you're gonna retain. So that means that you're going to retain your exceptional talent that you've invested all that money in. It costs so much more to hire and retrain than it does to keep that employee. So typically about three times the amount of that annual salary that the employee makes, that's how much it's gonna cost you to retrain and hire a new employee. So that's why it's so important to do the three R's, recruit right, recognize, and then you get retention. Okay. And then, you know, it, it occurs to me that of all the things that we've, a lot of the things that we've talked about, you know, it's, 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 it's difficult for small, it's more difficult for smaller businesses than for larger businesses mm -hmm. in some ways to comply because they don't have that dedicated HR person to, you know, to do all this stuff and it just seems like a, but this is something that actually seems like it's, it would be easier for a small business to take advantage than a large business mm -hmm. because they have that personal connection with their employees. And so I'm always looking for the ways that small businesses can actually outcompete larger businesses, and this seems like a perfect one, is to really know your employees and engage them. Right, that personal one-on-one. -on -one. As a small business owner, you have that uh, a lot more than a larger company would have. So you get to know the person, you know their family most of the time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, showing some concern about the, the family, all those kinds of things, it really keeps um, employees engaged. That's why with a lot of small businesses, you'll see employees who have been there forever. And then their kids come to work for them, you know, um, in the same company. And it's because of that, that atmosphere.